Greetings, Japan fans. In today's show, we're going to be looking at the question about culture in the workplace and what the most highly successful company cultures look like. Maishu arigatouzaimasu and welcome back to the Leadership Japan series. I'm your host in Tokyo, Dr. Greg Story, the corporate coaching and training guy, the president of Dalgany Training Japan, the best-selling author, Japan Sales Mastery and Japan Business Mastery. We are broadcasting around the world from Minato-ku in the center of Tokyo, the leadership capital of Japan. Now, this podcast brings insights, examples, experience about leading in Japan, and trust me, it is different here. If you have feedback on the show or preference about potential future topics and leave your comments, don't forget to rate, review, subscribe, share this podcast. Daily lineup looks like this on iTunes. Mondays, Cutting Edge Japan Business Show. Tuesday, the Presentation Japan Series. Wednesdays, the Sales Japan Series. Thursdays, the Leadership Japan Series. Fridays, the Japan Business Master Show. And my new show on Saturdays, Japan's Top Business Interviews. Now, before we get going, today's handy Japanese phrase is... Honto, meaning... Really? Is that true? Honto. Someone tells you something and you go, oh, really? You say, Honto. 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 Now, if you're dealing with a client, you're not going to say something that informal. They tell you something, you go, Honto. That would be very, very bad. If it's a client, you'd say, Ah, so desu ka? So desu ka? Naru hodo. Arizaimasu. Something more polite like that. But if it's a friend, informal, and they say something, and you want to say something like, really? You say, honto, honto, honto. This is episode number 367. 367. Today we're talking about how to join the Culture Champion Workplaces, part one. Harvard Emeritus Professor James Heskett's comparative study of the impact culture has on corporate financial performance was shocking. He found that as much as half of the difference in operating profit between organizations can be attributed to effective culture. Half. Wow. Now that is a big impact point, especially when we're talking about operating profit rather than just gross revenues. What is going on here? Corporate culture is like a glue that holds everything together. It impacts the formation of the strategy, how decisions are taken and followed, clarity around the why, respect for those at the top, and how customers are thought about and therefore how they are treated. Edgar Sheen's famous study of organizational culture identified how to uncover your existing culture. If you have a great culture, a so-so culture, or an underperforming culture, how would you know that in detail and where should you look? He found there were three levels of observable culture. Artifacts, describe the layout, the furniture used, the dress code, etc. Espoused values are those rules around behavior and how the team represents the organization to each other and to those outside. This will easily be found in the vision, mission and value statements gathering dust on the wall the degree to which the team's behaviours match the aspirations captured on glass, protected, beautifully framed parchment paper says everything about the culture and the people. Shared basic assumptions was his third indicator. These are the deeply embedded, taken for granted, this is how we roll around here, approaches on the part of the team. Toxic cultures are easy to spot. Widespread distrust. No accountability. Depressing negativity. Lack of a clear strategy, finger pointing, blame shifting, infighting, and greasy pole climbing internal corporate politicians running amok. What about the rest of corporate humanity? What then is a good culture apart from being the opposite of this tawdry lot of refuse dwelling disease infested rats in the system? Actually, there is no one size fits all solution in play here. It depends on a number of factors to do with the environment in which the firm operates. Following on from Charles Darwin's ideas about adaption to survive as a species, there may be adaptions of culture and organizations 
which enable them to thrive in the environment in which they find themselves. It might mean being highly competitive internally, or highly collaborative, incredibly creative, or enforcing razor-sharp discipline, etc. Find out more when we come back from the break. Today's show is brought to you by our public courses, but we also do custom in-house programs. We do these in Japanese and English. We do them online. We do them in the classroom. All bases covered. Get in touch with us right now. Today's show is sponsored by High Impact Presentations. That's on the 15th and 16th of July and also, again, on the 17th and 18th of August. That's in the classroom. Managing Stress, that's an online program. That's on the 17th of July. Also, in the classroom on the 17th of July, we have the secrets of how to make human relationships and effective public speaking. Now, our website is full of useful resources. Go to enjapan.dalecunny.com. You can also email me at greg.story at dalecunny.com. If you like learning and watching videos, we must have pretty close to a thousand now on Japan Dale Cunny TV. You see those on YouTube. We're releasing three shows every week. Uh, that's the Cutting Edge Japan Business Show. That's the premier business show on Japan. Comes out every Monday. Fridays, we have the Japan Business Master Show. And now on Saturdays, we have my new show, Japan's Top Business Interviews, where I interview the leaders from small and medium enterprises all the way up to the corporate captains of an industry on leading in Japan. Don't forget, get my book, Japan Sales Mastery. That's the Bible for selling in Japan. And my new book, How to Master Business in Japan, cunningly titled Japan Business Mastery. Welcome back. Even if you have plumbed a culture that really works for you, it is devilishly hard to maintain it. Past success promotes self-propelled inertia. COVID-19 has shaken everything up and requires changes, but the organization is stuck in ways which are familiar and which work just fine in the past. They just can't make the needed changes. This is especially tricky here in Japan, the risk aversion epicenter of the universe. Mergers and acquisitions rarely work, and the most common reason is that disparate cultures can't blend well enough together. The bigger player flexes their muscles and enforces their culture. The junior partner either collapses as the best people depart, or they descend in an internal guerrilla war against the invaders. Diverse societal cultures revolves around different ways of thinking, conflicting value systems and expectations. The Greenhorn Gaijin CEO arriving in Japan, pre-briefed and recently instructed to shake things up and get those folks to fly straight like everyone back home, is unknowingly on a kamikaze mission of self-destruction and folly. Leadership changes are such a huge factor in culture change. Never throw your strategy plans away because every five years the CEO will change and that work you did previously that has been shelved will now be in demand. If it was consolidation, centralization and discipline before, it is now. Let a hundred flowers bloom. Let a hundred schools of thought contend. Local innovation and the blitzkrieg of decentralization. COVID-19 has overturned the workplace. The rabbit hutch kitchen table is now the battlefield HQ as the scattered troops go about their business in blissful isolation from central command. This cultural extravaganza is a big topic. In part two, we will continue to talk about the impact of culture on new tech, corporate transparency, communication changes, and the chain of command. We'll also go deep on what the corporate culture champions are doing so that we know what we should be doing too. We did some proprietary international research on the most successful corporate cultures and all will be revealed in the next installment. Thank you for joining the Leadership Japan series. If you found the program useful, then tell your family, friends and colleagues. Don't forget to rate, review and subscribe to this podcast. Contact me, greg.story at 
www.dalekenny.com and go to our website enjapan.dalekenny.com Until the next episode, take what you thought valuable, put into action because idea application is what makes winners winners. So be one of them. Remember, I'm your corporate coaching and training guy here in Japan, ready to help you survive in your business. Music